Welcome to Plant Medicine Transmissions with Javier Regueiro. In this episode of Plant Medicine Transmissions, I would like to explore the issues of abuse of abuse of power, of emotional, physical, and sexual abuse in plant medicine circles. This is a delicate subject, but it seems important for me to warn people about our own gullibility when it comes to spirituality and healing something that is not acknowledged in the public awareness is the fact that such instances of abuse are pretty common in plant medicine circles as well as in spiritual communities. Unfortunately, it is not a prerogative of the Catholic Church, but can be seen in most ashrams, spiritual communities, uh, ayahuasca centers, and so forth. Such abuses come, in my opinion, as a result, oftentimes, of our own naivete. It is common to hear people being disappointed and being hurt because they hold this idea that uh, spirituality ought to be all pure and fair and that uh, plant medicine people ought to be in full integrity. However, these expectations are unrealistic because everybody from ayahuasqueros to swamis to gurus of any sort are human people. And therefore, they are easily prone to fall into the trap of seduction, of power over other people. We tell ourselves, well, these are spiritually evolved people, therefore they ought to be kind of perfect and above the uh, seduction of seduction and power. This is not what reality tells us. These communities are communities made of people and oftentimes their desires are put above and before our own needs for safety. That someone is dealing with spiritual energies does not necessarily mean that they are above engaging in abusive behaviors and practices. Spiritual and uh, healing communities are often very dysfunctional. Both the people who are leading such communities as well as the members of these communities often have shadow issues that are not examined and explored and healed. On the contrary, they are acted out with whoever is around. And a source of these abuses is the fact that we come to them with this idea that they are totally together and therefore worthy of our own trust. 
The other issue that surrounds uh, this theme of abuse is the fact that we come to these communities oftentimes carrying deep wounds that are reawakened in such circles. Ideally, in the event of such resurfacing, those communities provide the support to actually explore and heal those themes. However, the reality is that no such support is often available because these themes are too often overlooked and not addressed. Therefore, they manifest in those communities as anywhere else. Among the most common complaints in regards to uh, plant medicine communities are, first of all, a feeling that one is getting ripped off, that one is not getting their money's worth. That issue stems simply from an ignorance and an awareness of the mentality and the financial situation in communities that are often barely above the sustenance line. Here in Peru, it is not a good idea to ever pay large sums of money in advance because if we change our minds, if we wish to leave an ayahuasca center or other, by the time that we decide to leave, that money is more often than not already been spent. Therefore, refunds of any kind are an exception rather than the rule. A good way to avoid getting ripped off is by actually paying attention and not to fall too easily into the big promises that a plant medicine person may offer us, no matter how appealing. This is about us, not about them. It's about us not falling into that trap and also to pay attention to the people who run these establishments and see whether their interest in our money is more important than their interest in our own healing and well-being. If there is a strong pressure to buy a program of any kind, we can easily assume that there is a monetary interest that will supersede any other interest. And therefore, I strongly advise you to simply move on and let it be. To actually stay in a place of expectation, expectation of integrity, is delusional, it's illusory, and can only be a source of disappointment. As Carl Jung said, those who look outside themselves dream, and those who look inside awaken. So pointing the finger is a waste of time, and does little to change the situation. It is most important for us to take responsibility for our own choices. I'm fond of saying that there is no such thing as a bad plant medicine person because we are the ones who knock at their doors and not, we're not forced by anybody to buy into a program or other. In the end, our choices 
are dictated also by unconscious factors. As we seek healing, what happens oftentimes is a recreation once again of our own traumas and our own wounds. And these people are simply there to reflect back to us those wounds and traumas. Years ago, a woman came to visit me. She had just been in the jungle after her boyfriend recommended this ayahuasca center. And she was very upset, very upset by her experience and in a lot of judgment about the behavior of the ayahuasquero who had actually seduced her while she was there. I asked this woman and said, why did you go to this place? And she said to me, well, I had a car accident and severely injured my neck and shoulders. So I went to this healing center to heal those injuries. I asked her, what was happening at the time of your car accident? And she said that actually she had had the accident while on the phone with her boyfriend and he had told her that he had been sleeping with another woman. So clearly this physical injury was related with a theme of betrayal. And once in the jungle, that's what she recreated once again. Instead of taking responsibility and seeing that the main character in both instances with her boyfriend and in the jungle was herself, she was still not able to take responsibility for her own creation, for the things that she was inviting into her life, and instead spent most of her time just blaming the plant medicine person and judging the jungle environment as very dark and very abusive. This is a very interesting story because it clearly shows, as far as I'm concerned, that the world is simply a reflection of us. That to actually expect the world to be as we want it is not very realistic. In the end, our world and our choices, our experiences, are simply a reflection of our own selves and of the beliefs and the wounds that we carry in our consciousness and souls. The healing process is not one of a magical disappearance of our own wounds, but it implies a going into our wounds. And oftentimes, if we are in a place still of blaming others, then our own victimism, our own reluctance to take responsibility is once again reactivated. And it shows up in, once again, blaming others for our own pain. It is therefore very important for us to be aware of our own wounds and make our choices accordingly. Meaning, if we have a history of abusive behavior, of being sexually abused, and so on and so forth, then it is important to make the choice of a plant medicine person, a therapist of any kind, with that awareness. 
with the awareness that we may once again repeat old patterns. In the case of instances of abuse, and I know that my viewpoint is not the most popular these days, it is important to also acknowledge the fact that we have part in the experiences that we invite into our lives. We may not invite them consciously, yes, however, we are part of it. Instances of abuse, it takes always two people to tango and we can make much progress in our own healing process by acknowledging our own responsibility for our own experiences. To keep blaming others will only delay the fulfillment of that healing. In the case of plant medicine people as well as spiritual guides, what I see is that oftentimes we relish the special attention that those individuals accord us. They are very seductive and they answer and they often take advantage of our own hunger for knowledge, for healing, and for spiritual evolution. Just recently I have received an email from a young man who had paid a large sum of money to a center in the jungle with the promise of being able to apprentice there, to learn there for a year. And uh, soon enough, the main plant medicine person there invited this guy to a special San Pedro Tantric ceremony. Now, there is no such tradition of San Pedro Tantric ceremony anywhere to be found in traditional plant medicines. And sure enough, during that ceremony, the plant medicine person proceeded to try and have sex with this guy. Luckily for him, with a bit of force and perseverance, he was able to fend off this attack. But he was clearly disappointed, felt dishonored, and was in a lot of anger. As I was replying to this email, I actually felt that the best thing for this guy was to actually leave the jungle and go back to his home country to gain a little bit of perspective about this incident and invited him to let go of the easy temptation to blame this plant medicine person. Of course, my message was not the most welcome to the point that my reply was not even acknowledged. But the reality is that our level of consciousness is oftentimes very low, despite our spiritual leanings, it is easy for us to fall back into blaming, into disempowerment. And oftentimes, nowadays, if we share our stories of physical, emotional and sexual abuse with others, and we carry this energy of blaming, Unfortunately, we will find no shortage of people to agree with our viewpoint rather than supporting us in expanding beyond those limited viewpoints. To wish for a perfect world 
of integrity and mutual respect is a wonderful thing. However, that creation of this world of respect and integrity always starts with us by looking at our own predicaments and gently and patiently taking responsibility for them so that we can heal them. Blessings.